Evening, everybody. Glad you made it out. So in uh, June of 2015, I suffer a back injury that uh, essentially presses pause on every aspect of my life. So for those of you who know me, that's not good. But uh, there I am in bed, iPad in hand, trying to recover, surfing YouTube when I get an email from one of my employees. And it's got a link. And I click that link, and it introduces me to a gentleman named Paul Akers. Now, Paul deems himself to be a lean maniac. And I will tell you, that is exactly what he is. But what was interesting was he introduced me to a concept that is a tenet of lean called Kaizen. So Kaizen literally means continuous improvement. So that struck with me a little bit. I found that interesting. And uh, before I go into that a little more, I want to share with you my opinion of uh, self-help and, and discipline. And so all my life, I think we, we could take everything I've heard and put it into this auditorium tonight and say, Here's all the self-help we've ever had. I think it all says the same thing. And to prove my point, I'd give you the idea that I've heard, seize the day or live like there's no tomorrow. And I can tell you that never, not once, changed the way I approached a problem, changed a strategy, stopped banging my head against the wall, just didn't impact me. And it wasn't until someone said to me, hey, your life is like the minutes are, are the grains of sand in an hourglass. And when they run through that hourglass, they're gone forever. It gave me chills. I had this sudden sense of urgency. It, it just, it made me almost terrified. I said, I just wasted so much time on petty things that don't matter, they bring no value. Well, those three things essentially mean the same thing, but that one resonated with me. So the first point I make is, listen for your voice, and whatever resonates with you, follow that, and try to master it. So what Paul said resonated with me, Kaizen. So I studied that, and took that in during my recovery and then I took it to work. So I came in and introduced it to my team of five people and said, hey, here's this continuous improvement idea. And over one year, we make 105 improvements over five people. So some people are like, well, wh what constitutes an improvement? So it's simple. It can be anything from the way we handle waste, trash, removal in our processes, all the way up to how we deliver the service and the product to our customer. Most important, however, is what do you do to measure that? So it's important, you take your goal, and you measure improvements in the following way. Safety, quality, complexity, and speed. And this is critical because each of those things trump the one below it. So very simply, if it's not safe, you're done talking about it. So from that standpoint, there's a key that comes out of that. It removes the personal nature of those improvements. They're no longer my idea or your idea. They're whether or not they measure towards the goal that we agree we're trying to achieve. If they do, we put them in place. And if they don't, the conversation's over. It's very simple. So 150 improvements. So these, my guys took to this thing like crazy. It was awesome. And every day I would come home and I would share this with my fiance, Barbara. And she's awesome. So she'd sit there and she'd be like listening to everything I had to say. And I'd be like, look at this video of this improvement we made. Or this customer called us today and shared this great idea with us. They thought how awesome it was we did this. And she was, you know, fantastic, very attentive. But over the course of that year, I noticed something. She was becoming frustrated. And I couldn't understand that until I realized Barbara works for a traditional employer, someplace where she's not empowered to make any change that could impact her, her job in that way. And so I began to wonder about that and wonder how it was impacting our relationship. So while having coffee with a friend one day, I was sharing this idea and I said to Rob, hey, I'm leaving the best part of my life behind me. I can't share this with her other than tell her what's going on. And he comes up with a very simple concept. He says, why don't you set aside 90 days and share it with her. Take her for 90 days and, and make a goal plan. And I go, wow, that's a really simple idea. Why not do that? Well, the key was I wanted Barbara to experience Kaizen. So I set up aside thinking that through and realized that Kaizen every 90 days with Barb would give us momentum in our relationship. We'd be on the same page and constantly working towards the same goals, right? So very simple. So here's how we went about it. The first thing, as I mentioned before, you need a goal. What's your goal? For us, it's very simple. We want to spend more quality time together doing meaningful things. For some people, it's experiences. It might be physical assets. It might be other traveling goals, things like that. But we defined what that was for us. Now, before I go any further, it's important that I warn you. This is a very intimate process. We've all seen marriages that are 25, 30 years old. They don't even talk about money. So if that's you, your first Kaizen improvement is to get that done. 
get it out of the way, because if you can't talk about that, you're not gonna, not gonna be successful with this. So we didn't have that problem. We were able to identify our goal and we knew what we wanted to do. But we did realize to be successful, we needed to have some rules of engagement. And so those are very simple, and I'm gonna walk you through them now. The first one was frequency. So we kind of covered that, right, 90 days. And we looked at it, but we couldn't find anything that really was better. Every planner, every financial planner, fiscal calendars, everything's 90 days. So why reinvent the wheel? It was just this easy fit for what we were gonna try to do. The next one was sequester. So as you can imagine, I'm easily identified when we're out. So we knew that if we go to have a cup of coffee, you're gonna run into three people and you're just not gonna be able to talk. So we needed to be able to get ourselves away from everybody where we could both talk privately and share without interruption and get something done. Travel time. So again, I'm the problem here. I'm not coach friendly. You're not gonna put me in a small package. It's just not gonna work. So we decided immediately we were gonna drive. Well, that limited our range, right? So we didn't wanna be in a car all day. So we put a five hour perimeter on it. So five hours from Utica though is great. There's a ton of adventures you can take within five hours of here. So a really easy one for us. Next part of that is the destination has to be walkable. So we don't wanna be stuck in cars and Uber and all that. We wanna be able to walk where we're gonna go. Why is that key? Because you're gonna share the entire time. You know, people try to walk in text, it doesn't usually work very well. So you're gonna be talking to each other, you're gonna be experiencing everything you see along the way. You're not gonna be catching each other up, you're gonna be on target together. This one's key, right, discipline. You gotta do your work and then you get rewarded. We all know it, but we don't tend to do it. So when we get to our destination, we can't have a good time first, we gotta plan what's going on, we gotta get it together. And so, oh, I went ahead there, huh? So respect is the, the, second, uh, the next second to the last one. And that is where we talked about, you've got to respect your partner. You need to know that your partner and you are on the same page, that you can talk openly, and you're gonna, because you're trying to, how do we do this? Measure our goal, it's not personal. We're gonna work forward. So it's okay, is that reach the goal we're after, or doesn't it? So we know there's respect there. And then as you see, the next step for us is self-awareness. Self-awareness, what works for you? You need to know your hangups, your issues, because you gotta learn how to overcome them so you can be successful together. What tools do you need? Do you work with a pencil? Do you work with a tablet? What do you need? So you can go and you can get it done. So here's what it looks like for us. It's a three day trip. Always at the end of the week and we'll get back to that in just a minute. But Wednesday through Friday. So I'm gonna take you through each of those days very simply. Wednesday, it's travel day, five hours. That works out really nice. If you're doing a five hour trip, it gets you in town two to 2.30. Most places allow you to check in by three o'clock, so it's usually not an issue. We get in, we drop everything off, and then we hit the town, grab our phones, we're off. We're gonna go out, we're gonna see what's local, what's the local culture, what kind of shows are there, what kind of, uh, is there a band playing, is it open mic night somewhere, is there a trivia night, whatever. All the time keeping our eyes open for a place that we can sequester ourselves, right? Some place that we can go and work privately tomorrow when we need to get some work done and, and be successful for why we're here on our trip in our first place. We do that for a few hours and we come back to the hotel, we get cleaned up, and it's date night. I don't know the last time you had a date night, sometimes it's been a while, but you're gonna go out, it's just the two of you. There's nobody to check in with, you're gonna go and it's an adventure because you've never been any of these places before in most cases. FaceTime, together, walking. Spend the night, have a good time. You're not talking about your work, you're not talking about your plan, you're just there together. So that night's in the books, everything's great, you've gotten a good night's sleep, it's Thursday morning, it's time for the rubber to meet the road, guys. It's time to get it going. So now you're gonna grab your tools, you're gonna go have a good breakfast, and you're gonna go off to where you decided to stay for the day. So that's really easy. We've got a particular agenda we're gonna work through. So the first piece is, what's unfinished? If we've done a trip before, what did we not accomplish? Is it relevant? I think you will find in most cases, your life has changed so much in 90 days, it, it no longer matters. That piece is off and we don't worry about it. The next piece is financials. This is critical because this is what allows us to do what we do. This is the thing that causes most people anxiety, so let's just get it out of the way. So we're gonna talk about the financials. What's coming up? Do we have any unexpected expenditures? Do we have anything on the horizon that we didn't expect? Anything we need to plan for? And did we hit our savings and, and retirement goals? Now for us, we have children. So if you have children, they're next. So we talk about our kids. Who's going to college? Who's got to dance? Who's got sports? What's gonna happen? Do we need to travel? Get all that stuff because it's going to impact our calendar and our deliverables for what we're going to do later. With everything that we serve out of the way, we talk about us. So this is important, right? Big deal. So we come with a 30-day and a 90-day goal for ourselves personally, 
and then one that we want to share with our partner. So when it's on a piece of paper, there's eight goals altogether, eight of them. Four shared, two personal. You sit and together, we measure those. Do they reach the goals that we've defined? If so, you might adopt one, two, four, all of them. You're gonna put those in place, and then you're gonna proceed forward. With those out of the way, you've measured those, you've measured your financial goals, everything's together, you're done for the day. For us, it's four to six hours, maybe with a coffee break in there. Now you get to go back out on the town. It's yours, clean up, go have an adventure. You have date night 2.0, take in a show, do something different, whatever you wanna do, but the night's yours. It's your reward for spending all this time in your relationship. And sadly, it's more than a lot of us dedicate to what we do. So that's done. We've had a great night, Friday comes. This is a simple but critical day. This is the accountability day. We get up again, grab our breakfast, we sit down somewhere quietly, we open up the calendar. The calendar's important because it's our accountability coach. It's not my idea or Barbara's idea of being accountable. We agree, when do we wanna hit that goal? It goes on the calendar. Now, no one needs to remind me. I just look at the calendar and I know when I'm due to have something finished. That's what this is about, to be successful. So we put it on the calendar, we work our way through it. If you get to something that doesn't make sense to you, it's simple. Cross it off and discard it, because trust me, you probably have more than you can get done in 90 days. That's our usual finding. So when you're done with that, you're gonna go one, far, one step further and that's plan your next trip. Now, if you don't do this, trust me, it will not be a 90-day trip, it'll be a 120-day trip, it'll be a 180-day trip, it'll, it won't happen at all. If you go home without planning your trip, you will not get it done. So take an hour, make some phone calls. Inevitably, you've looked at other destinations. So look around, call the hotels, find out what's walkable, is it feasible, is that a good locale for you? Get that done, book it and get it on the books. You're done, it's noon, your day is yours. You're only five hours from home. Now, I think some people would choose to have a long weekend. That's fine. We always choose to come home on Friday. And there's a reason for that. So I talked about this being at the end of the work week. Here's why. You went in on Monday like everybody else. You work through to Tuesday to wrap up your business. You're gone for the week. If you come in on Monday, if you're gone Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and come in on Thursday, you're playing catch up while everybody else is winding down their week. And then all of a sudden your weekends and you don't feel successful at all. You sat there and struggled through your work day. It's no good. So now we've had this great success in our relationship. It's noon on Friday, we go shopping, we walk around, we, you know, we take in some more sites if we want to, and then we travel home, we're home by 10 o'clock. And now we, we are able to start Monday like everybody else, but we're on the same page. So we've got this great thing called momentum again. Now we spend our weekends being successful, working the things that we've put on our agenda. So now not only have we had a great trip, but by Monday, We've gotten all these other things checked off our list or we're working towards our goals already and we're in sync. We are ready to rock and roll. It's fantastic. So that's, that's what our travel trip looks like. So uh, very simple and then we wind up and we do it again. So what I'd like to do here is, first of all, I'd like to thank Barbara, she's out there and without her, none of this would be possible. And uh, secondly, I'd like to say, if you'd like more about this, if you want to follow along with us, we are on social media. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. I uh, go into a little deeper dive for this. The, uh, the third piece of that is, I would encourage you, we're going into the weekend. Press pause on all those things that don't matter and make some time for you to get momentum in your relationship because it really is awesome. All right? Thank you very much.